We need to talk. 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 Welcome to WTT TV. I'm your host, Mr. KOA, alongside Top Boy. And we're back again. Back again. Back again. <laughs> Yo, we gotta we gotta turn this into our like our our stuff again. Yeah. Um, on our podcast, we used to just like we just honestly we just come, we wrap it up, we joke around, we laugh. Sometimes we open the show with just something that happened our day, something that pisses us off. I just want to turn this into like a this is not it's not a show anymore. This is TV, but this is a vibe. You guys are coming. You can you can play us while you're cooking your food. Here's in the background. Yeah, you can you know bring a girl, cuddle up, and soon maybe we're on Netflix soon. I don't know. Maybe we can be a Netflix and chill thing eventually. I don't know. So you know what? I've 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 often wondered if this is the show for people to be watching with their couple, like with their partner. Because I'm wondering how many times people have watched our stuff or listened to our stuff mm. with their partner, and then it just turns into. Like it's like, see, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> see, look, look happens. what they said. This is what this is what you should be doing as a man. Yeah. Could you imagine we target a man's manhood because of a show? I know for a fact. Could you imagine a woman said, "This is how a man should be." I know for a fact oh. it's probably happened. You see some more? You should be more. There's more. I know that this show has been problematic because it's been problematic for me, and mm. I'm on the show. <laughs> like, <laughs> no. there have been times where things. Imagine been, you're not involved. Things have been said, and I'm just like. Oh my God! They got they got they got dirt on me. They yeah. got proof that I said this, you know, and I have to I have to hold this L. Anyway, so, so Disney Plus, are you into it? Yeah, but here's a, here's the thing. I haven't right? I haven't touched it yet. Here, here's Is it thing. just all just old stuff that we already no, seen? No, it's not. So okay. here's the thing. Like Disney, pretty much owns like everything, mm -hmm. right? So right now there are a couple of things. I'm, I'm in the tech stuff, right? So this is my review. This yeah. is a more Johnson's review of Disney Plus real quick. Basically, uh, the interface is, is not the greatest yet because when you're looking at the app, all you see is like pure nostalgic stuff. Okay, right? like to get you attracted kind of thing. I think that's their yeah. thinking behind it because, you know, majority of the people who are heavily into the streaming stuff nowadays are millennials and people that are younger, right? And what were millennials watching in their childhood? Mm -hmm. All the shows that they have on there. Um, you see Netflix just did the same thing. They bought Nickelodeon. Mm. So it's just like to they, bring, to bring they kids, know they need to... Bring kid shows into it. Kid shows, they need yeah. to hook on. Like if they put Rugrats on there, like chances are I'm going to watch yeah. like an episode in the background right, one right. day, right? Um, so that's part of the reason. But then where... Disney Plus and all these other platforms are, I wouldn't say struggling, but they just don't have the cachet yet, but it's coming, is like Disney Plus originals, like their own shows, mm. right? Like shows that are created specifically just to be on Disney Plus. Right. So the same way Netflix has all their shows. Like exclusivity, you mean? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So how Netflix will have um, um, like Stranger ne Things Netflix or like originals. Riverdale. Like, like you're not finding this anywhere else. Kind of yeah, exactly. So right. that is slowly coming to Disney. Like, mm -hmm. you know it's coming. It's just all of those shows aren't there off the bat, which is why people are so quick to be like, ah, I don't really see the appeal. It's, it's coming. There's no rush to get it yet. Mm -hmm. um, but they do have some dope stuff on there that I've seen. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, it is cool. Like, it's cool when you go back and watch. It's just, you think it'll, what's the longevity of it? Is it, is it the fad? There's a lot of fads. I don't, I, okay, so here's the thing. I don't think it's a fad. I think the longevity is going to be, it, Disney Plus is smart. Like, because they took all their content back from all these other places, mm -hmm. Disney Plus is probably the only streaming platform that every single parent is going to get, for sure. They're not even going to think about it because of all mm -hmm. the kid-friendly content they have on there. Even right. aside from cartoon shows, like, you could download, like, with Netflix, I know with the app, Originally, you couldn't download all the shows right to your phone right, right away. Right. On Disney Plus, you can. Doesn't well, matter what well, it is. Well, there's still certain shows that you still can't. On Netflix? On Netflix, like there's, yeah. there's like downloadable song, download, downloadable shows versus yeah. regular shows, shows where you just can't download. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Disney Plus, you can download everything. Anything, okay. So like I'm thinking of like from like the market is way too big for them. The kid to, market. Is yeah. Crazy. Is, like if you're a kid or if you're a parent, if I'm a parent and I have a kid, it's like cool. Like go get it. Yeah. I'm download this. Like if I'm going on a plane ride or something, mm -hmm. boom, I can download whatever show they want. If I'm bored, I could sit back and watch like Boy Meets World, like sh stuff that I used to watch right. when I was a kid. Right, that's still 
holds up today. Like yeah. that's that's one thing I will say that Disney Plus made me realize is that some of your shows age well. Some shows <laughs> age like really yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. And then I was sit there thinking, I'm like, man, children of today, they like, don't know. They don't they know don't like know what shows. we grew up with. They don't like, know real shows. People who grew up it's in the so 80s true. and 90s like had some of the best. Cartoons, Cartoon, shows. Cartoons for sure. Yeah. Cartoons for sure, I will say. TV shows, sitcoms. I, sitcoms, yes. I've argued that we probably live in the golden age of TV right now. Mm-hmm. Just because of like there's so many new things coming out. But I don't think anything beats sitcoms in like the yeah. 90s. Yeah. There's way too many. That's true. Right? So, with all that being said. But in terms of it being a fad though, like I don't think it's necessarily a fad. I just think that, like, like, think, like we're talking when about. When I say fad, do you think people are, are posting about it, making, you know, downloading it, for example, mm. because it seemed like the cool thing to do? Or do you think people yeah, I mean, like really sh- have been waiting for Disney to finally make an app where you can, you know what I'm saying? I mean, there was, right? a, lot of, there was a lot of hype around it for the last year. Uh, I do think there are a lot of people who, like, just jump on the bag wagon and post in their Instagram stories. I definitely think that's a thing. Um, I would say there's more of those people than people like me who are like, like, oh, I'm waiting for this to see what's going on, right? Right. Um, But I have a first question, though. Actually, it wasn't a question that was asked to us. It was a question that I came across while watching something else. And pretty much there was this, uh, Steve Harvey has like this talk show Mm -hmm. and he had these women on the show and a woman had called in sent a video in and asked the question. She's like, hey, like, I uh, love the show. I've been, one of my best friends got married, right? And she's been married for like the last two, three years. But now I'm falling for someone, right? And that someone is the ex of my friend. Okay. Right? I don't know. They so should... they, the friend's married already to somebody else? Yes. And the friend is now falling in love with the ex-partner. Yes, of her friend that's now married. So she's already married there, right? She's exactly, like, exactly okay, right? Cool. So, you know, she, there's no context behind this. It's not like that was, it's not clear whether or not that was my, that was the last partner, you know? Like most recent Most recent marriage. ex. Like, yeah. there's no context. Right, All right, we right. know is that's the ex. And when it went back to the show, like, Steve Harvey was like, ah, this is a question for the ladies on the show. There's right. like four other women, right? <laughs> okay. And... I think, I could be wrong, but I think it was Carrie Hilson. Carrie Hilson was one of the women on the show. Mm. And she was just like, like, that's my ex. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't date this person. Even though yeah. she's married, you know. Yeah, yeah. Even though the woman is now married, she's like, that's my ex. Get, like, that's her opinion. That's her opinion. Carrie, Carrie Hilson said Carrie this? Carrie Hilson said okay. this. And then, even though I'm married. And then, like, yes. And when she said this, all the women in the crowd were like, woo, like they agreed. And then this one woman, slightly older on the end was basically saying that she was kind of <laughs> I, I hate to say like logically yeah. but basically what she said is this she was like honestly when you date someone when you go out of way to date people or you meet someone chances are they're in your circle mm-hmm. right so what she said was look Steve you're famous like chances are you're gonna meet someone they might not necessarily be famous, but they'll be in the circle of like your like vicinity, right, right. right? So regular people like you and I, when we start dating people, it's either through like a friend, mm-hmm. or most commonly, this is back when we were at corporate, it's like in the workplace. You just, yeah. Because you see these people all the time, right, right. right? So my question to you is, out of all the people you've ever dated in your life, have any of them been someone that was like nowhere close to your circle. Like they weren't a friend of a friend. You didn't meet them through like a family member. Genuinely, like you were like you met someone that you had no affiliation with whatsoever. So, do I have no affiliation? No affiliation with them? Like you dated? Like, <laughs> no, but okay. But I'm gonna clarify. So, yeah. is it just I? Is it sorry? Is it known affiliation or even? Post known affiliation. No, like you went into this relationship. Right. And like as far as you know, there was like, I didn't meet you through a friend. Yeah, but I didn't meet you at work. Maybe afterwards. No, you like, found out they know people that you know after. That's what I'm saying. Is it 
is it they don't know anyone at all? Even yeah, after, because or? I think because I think what I'm asking is you didn't meet this person through someone right. else or, met, or through another avenue. Right. right. So I've met many different girls on my own that no that no one kind of introduced me to because mm. I'm just I'm social. I'll mm. go talk to somebody if I see someone. I'm not talking about changes. like girls that you met. I'm talking about girls that you've dated, like been in a relationship well, some, with. Some of the girls that I've dated, I've met them and became in a relationship with them from talking to them. But but like did they did you meet them? No because, one brought me yeah. and been like talk to this person or yeah. I know this person or int- or introduce them yeah. to me. You know. But the what I'm now thinking about is like. I don't think there's anyone I've dated hmm. that also, after getting to know them, didn't know anyone in my circle. Yeah. At all. You okay. know what I'm saying? I get like, what you're saying. They didn't, I didn't know anybody. I didn't know they knew people I knew yeah. prior to talking to them. Okay. Yeah. But then later, once you're talking to them, it's like you might see someone like some, some of their stuff. You're like, what? You know this hmm. guy? Oh, yeah. Like, they know people that I know, but I didn't know about that prior to talking to them. Yeah, okay, I get so they're, that. So they're still, they're still connected to you, but yeah. you even know they're connected until you actually made that connection yourself. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't think, like, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think there's someone that I've dated that later on, I was like, they know nobody that I know as well. Hmm. They're literally just an unknown being, and, like, anyone that I'm introducing, to, any of my friends that I know, or any of their friends that they know, I've never known, and they've never known. Yeah, I think that is more rare. Okay, because what I've what I've noticed is that's a very good point. Because what I've noticed is it's a degree of separation. There's yeah, so if many. I like, if I think about my exes, right, my exes and my current girlfriend, like everyone I've ever been with, uh, every single one except for the last two, my ex, I met her on Tinder, mm-hmm. right, and then when we started dating. Um, I, quite honestly, never would have, like, if I didn't meet her through, like, this dating app, I don't think I would have even... crossed paths with her. I don't think I would have crossed paths with her because we're not in the same circles. And then once we started dating, uh, it's not even that I was just like, oh, like, you're friends with this person who's friends with this person that I know. Mm -hmm. It was just like, it wasn't even like that. It was, oh, like, you know this person but I'm not friends with them, but I know of them. You know what I mean? Right. It's that extent. And then... You just know of the same people. Yes. And then my current partner, like, I for sure never would have crossed paths with yeah. her. Like, it's chances I wouldn't have. And she obviously doesn't know anyone. Right. Until, like, she came here, so it's me and my friends, right? But everyone else, like, it was for sure. Like, I met them through... A friend, I either works with them... Some type of referral service. So, yeah, there was some type of referral. And, like... <laughs> Yeah. It makes me think other things too about, you know, is your vision being clouded when, because I'm talking specifically about like workplace stuff now, mm-hmm. right? I don't know if you've ever. I never dated anyone from work. Have you ever slept with anyone from work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this, this is the thing, right? I sometimes wonder if workplace relationships are like clouded because here's the thing you most likely only started dating this person not dated you let's just say you slept with this person right you probably only slept with this person because you saw them so much so much (laughs) that you're just like whoa you convinced yourself that you like them yes (laughs) (laughs) do you think that's the thing i must like you (laughs) you're here every day do you think (laughs) like do you think Workplace dick is a real thing. <laughs> you think that's a real thing? <laughs> in what sense of the term? In the what sense, do you mean like in the sense like that it's, like you're because, it's heightened because of work? Yes. Like if <laughs> if you met this person outside of work, would you talk to them still? Exactly. Nah. Like, do you think you would date? You know this what? Person? No, I know exactly what you're talking about. I think because like, I know for a fact I wouldn't. You know, like, you know what happens? I feel like <clears throat> I feel like from work, if you date someone or even start talking to someone from work, you only start liking each other by the shared stress of that job. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you both become yeah. stress relievers for each other from mm. the shared understanding of this what workplace. What a foolishness you have to go through. Like, we both don't really like this job as much. And I now like you because you share the same sentiments of my dislike for this job. <laughs> so let's be friends. 
and have sex. <laughs> like, and have sex. Like, that's that's literally what happens. I feel like you you create a a romance out of your shared frustrations. Yeah. But if there like if you guys never worked together, you probably wouldn't even give that person time that of much. Day. Not maybe not the time of day, but like that much investment to really know if you like them or not. Like you're almost. If I keep seeing you every day, I'm gonna start talking to you. Mm. And then you're like, oh, you're you're kind of cool. It becomes yeah. like a, yeah, they're not bad kind of thing. Versus if you if you meet someone that you don't know at the, like at the workplace, your your expectations are higher. Yeah, you don't have high expectations for your work people. Mm. You're like, I mean, she's good enough for work. <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's a work friend. Like it's whatever. Huh. So for the marriage thing, do you think that if someone feels away? Because they're dating an ex after they're married, they have any right to feel away. If your friend says, yo, I, you met the girl of your life, bruh. You have kids. You're, you guys are feeling nice. You have family. Pick a fence. I mean, don't approach me like that. Pick a fence. <laughs> listen, listen. I don't care you're my listen, boy. Don't approach listen, me like that. Pick a fence. You have a full <laughs> family. You've been going on family trips. Annual photos, you're you're locked in. Of course I'm, I'm locked listen, in. No, no. He's saying you are locked in. You're good. Yeah, I know. So you don't need to tell me that. This ex-girlfriend, I know you used to guys used to date, you know, a couple years before you got married. She's feeling the kid. You're good with that though, right? Like you guys are done. <laughs> like you didn't you leave your marriage? Like, come on now, you're not leaving your marriage for that. Yo, you're trash. What's for this, the right? issue? <laughs> you're trash. What's Look, the issue? Here's okay, here's the thing. You don't love your wife. Wow. <laughs> wow. You, know, you can't. Don't love your life. You, I, you I, love your wife. That's, that's if you're baloney. Mad, you know, if you're, <laughs> that's baloney. If you're mad, that's baloney. If you're mad, you don't love your wife. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> you don't love your wife. There's no way. You actually believe that? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was like, yo, is this guy being serious? Because look, no. here's, the, here's the thing. It's context. Yeah. Everything is context. Right? So... Look, how, okay, you, we're going to play, set the scenario okay. right now. I'm asking you some questions. <laughs> how long am I married to my wife? This is your second year anniversary. Second year anniversary, Fresh right? marriage, honeymoon stage, you're still <laughs> in it. You, how long, how long was I dating the ex? Five years. Wow, five years, okay. Five uh, years of broke up, messy. Messy breakup. Mm. Um, like, why was it, like, was it messy because, like, we hated each other? Was it messy because we invested all this time? You know what I mean? Like, uh, okay, Mess messy because kind of, like, wasted five years of my life. What the hell? Like, like, I'm mad at you for the time wasted. Both you guys are like, yo, after all this, we didn't work? All right, good idea. Like, we're done. Okay. No, one, no one cheated. It was just kind of just, like, it's just, we're falling out. It's, like, five years okay. and it's just not there anymore. It's, like, what a waste of time. Okay, so I think the reason why it's valid and some cases of someone to be upset. Like, I just, okay. I don't have an ex in my life right now where if I got married tomorrow and one of my boys are like dating my ex, I wouldn't be mad, yeah. but I would look at them like, I, I don't understand. I'd be like, <laughs> this is weird. Right? I'd be like, you can't deny that it would be weird. Yeah, right? of course. Being mad though is like another thing. And it's, it's context, right? right? Like a lot of my boys know a lot about my past relationships, mm. enough to know like why it may not have worked, or they may have known the dynamic that went on during the relationship. Like right. they were present right, throughout right. the relationship, right, so it's right. weird for that stuff to it's happen. Like you know too much, right? Like you, you know, know you know too much. You know what's crazy? Yeah. Like, and this might sound childish when I say this, right? But I, this happened to me in high school. Mm. Like in high school, I was friends with a guy and I was dating this girl, mm. right? And then me and this girl broke up. That happened to me too. Yeah, me and this girl broke up, and then I want to say, like, once again, my vision could clearly be clouded right now, but mm -hmm. I'm going to say it might have been two, two months? Not even. It might have been a month. That you broke up? Yeah, that yeah. we broke up, and they're dating. Right. Right? He's, so, your, he's your good friend. He wasn't my good friend, but him and I were, like, boys at the time. Right, right, But this is the thing. After that happened, me and him just couldn't be friends anymore. And I used to think, like, you know what? That was high school. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. younger. Maybe I was just like, ah, screw this guy. I can't yeah, be friends yeah. with him. But to this day, like, I've, ta I've spoken to people that I've known. Him and I, like, after that incident, it was the kind of thing where it's just like, yeah, we can't, can't be friends. Yeah. How's that going to look? 
How's it gonna look? I'm hanging out with you, and it's like you're dating the girl that I was just dating yeah. for like a year. It's the, op- it's the optics. It's the optics. Like, <laughs> yeah. how is that? How am I gonna look? You I, know what I mean, yo, I, I feel the, I can't lie. I feel the same way because so the, the same situation happened to me, except he actually was the reason she broke up with me. So I definitely couldn't be friends with him anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. Like I told him something in confidence, and he told her, and she broke up with me because she oh, heard it from him. He dirty dogged you. Then they dated from that. He dirty dogged you. I'm like, you. this is crazy. Yeah, you know, <laughs> this is crazy. And what was you even snitched on me and took her? That's insane. And what was even <laughs> crazier about that scenario for me was just like my mind was like so wild about it. I was mm. just like, because I couldn't understand. I genuinely couldn't understand it at the yeah. time. I was like, how can someone do this, right? And I was like, look, if y'all are gonna date, you better get married. You know what I mean? Cause, yeah. Because it's like, what was the point? What like, was the point yeah, yeah. of this, right? Because you guys like, better be like the ones for each other. Yeah, because we were I'll tight. Be- Right? And then ended up breaking up. Right. And I'm just like, dude, what was the point? And the funny thing about this is two, like, Carrie Hilson actually said this. She mm-hmm. was like, you know, there are seven billion people in the pla- in, on the planet. So you're going for my friend? Like, go, like, go, <laughs> go find... S- go somewhere else. Go somewhere else. But let me play devil's advocate to yeah, that yeah. point, though. It's like, most people, I'm going to say, like, a hard 90%. 90% of people are not, like, seeing people outside of their own city. No. All right? So to say, like, there are so they're, many they're people in the local, world. They're staying local, and not only are they staying local, they're staying within what they already know. Exactly. It's like, okay, you guys dated, and what, what I feel weird about when that stuff happens, like, you're saying, like, a, like a boy dating an ex or whatever. Yeah. Then you start questioning, like, have you been wanting her a whole relationship? Exactly. You're like, like how long? Like, this how is, long have you spark. been thinking about this? Come on now, this you is know? spark. And then for her, it's like, have you wanted my friend while I was with you? Like, have you even just have you thought about it? Look, I'm old. Like that's too much. It's too much. I'm a bit. I, I'm a bit older now, so I start. I'm able to think about some of these things a bit more. Yeah. Right. So it's like you know, okay, the low hanging fruit idea of it is like, yeah, how long have you been? thinking about this person. But then the next level part of it is, do you actually like each other or do you just like the thrill of it being something that you shouldn't do? <laughs> like the forbidden. No, for yeah. real. Because like, look, if we're talking about like uh, sexual encounters and mm-hmm. stuff like that, it's been proven and like I, I've heard people talk about it where, you know, some people enjoy like sexual encounters when they know there's some sort of like Taboo risk aspect, to or it. risky yeah. aspect to mm-hmm. it. So, like, imagine your boy breaks up with his girl, and you're not necessarily thinking about hooking up with his ex or like doing anything with his ex. Mm-hmm. But the moment that girl is free, it's free, and she starts not necessarily just free. The moment she starts giving you hints mm-hmm. that she might be into you in some way. A part of your brain is going to be like, nah, I can't do that. That's my boy's girl. <laughs> and another part of your brain is like, but on the low, though. But on the low. Like, what <laughs> yeah. would that be like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's the risky part. I so know. that's where my mind goes at this mm. part of my life now. It's like, yo, do you guys actually like each other? Or do you, like, it's some sick, twisted game. Or do you just like the fact that, like, you know you shouldn't be doing this, yeah. but... And it, I also know you can't do anything about it. Yeah. You're married. You, you're you know about, what I mean? What you're talking about it. What's the problem? But you, like, let's let's just ignore the marriage part yeah, now, right? Even if you're not married, even if you're not married, like these are still valid thoughts yeah. and it go through your head. It's just like, yo, like, okay, like how how worth it is this? Like, I know that some people, it's like, you know what? I may not be like I can openly say this. I, in all the exes I've been with, like I was probably not, I was not the guy for my ex, right? Mm-hmm. So whoever they date next or are dating, it's probably that person. Mm. Or it could be... Or a better man than you. Yeah, better man than me. <laughs> yeah. right? It's a better man than me. They, yeah. might, they might be going on from there. Yeah. But the point is, it's like, yo, like, is my, is my boy that person for her? I know my boy, and I know you. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. so, this, so this easily rolls into the Omarion situation. So I, I, oh, I, yeah. I know you saw the yeah. interview. On Vlad TV. So Marion, if you guys don't know who B2K is, for those of you, B2K was a group, um, a, a music group from our, our era. Yeah. Um, very popular. They broke up. Marion was the lead. Uh, Lil Fizz was the ladies, I guess, ladies man of the group. Um, haven't heard anything from Lil Fizz in years. So I don't even know what he's doing. Yeah. But Marion 
uh, was able to have a successful career and grow his, his brand. Now, Omaria and Lil Fizz were in the group together, have been childhood friends for, you know, obviously since they're kids. Yeah. Omaria has children with his former uh, partner, and it turns out now Lil Fizz is now seeing the mother of his kids. So, there was an interview with Omaria and being asked very detailed and intricate and daggering questions <laughs> from Vlad TV to try and get an emotion out of him. You yeah. can tell he's like, that's what Vlad does. How does though. it make you feel? That's what though. he does. Though. You know, yeah. like I, that's his, his job. He but said, like, you can see the optics yeah, of like, it though, right? Like, 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 you see how looks. It's yeah. like, yeah, yeah. And Omari had answered it very professionally. He's like, you know, like, this is, this is not my, my business. You know, yeah. if, they're, if they're happy, I just want them to be happy. They should be happy. It's more when it affects me, when it's affecting my kids, because my kids are involved. Mm. Now, I watched that interview a few times, because, like, if you just listen to it, you're like, you know what? I, I saw people's comments. When people's comments are like, yo, he's handling that. He's unbothered. Mm. He looks, you know, he's so professional. <laughs> And now as a man, I'm like, let me watch this a few more times. and Because yeah. we have tells. We all have mm. tells. Mm. Every man has a tell, right? Yeah. And I, I don't know Omari on personally, but I'm like, if I watch this a few more times, I'm like, I'm going to find this tell. And Omarion's tell was, if you watch the interview, every time Vlad asked him about how he felt, like, Lil Fizz has been your boy, and, like, you know, they're, they're together, and, they're, you know, how does it make you feel? Like, you know, like, there's no way you're okay with that. He's like, no, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm... I'm all right with it. Like, he, his tell is he slows down. Yeah. And he's almost, he's almost processing what's happening. And he starts blinking very rapidly <laughs> if you watch it. Well, so it's like, look. he's not okay with this. I mean, no one, like, no one. No, like, but the thing is, yeah. the way people are taking it is like, oh, like, Mar Marion's on bother. Like, no, like, he's a bigger man. Like, Omarion is not okay with this. Yeah. The mother of his kids is with his best friend. Mm. He's not okay with this. He keeps saying, I just want them to be happy, like, as long as they're happy. That is a cop-out line, first of all. But, but like, his, like, near the end, didn't he change it up, though? He was basically saying that, like... He's, like, change the narrative. He's yeah, like, I don't like the narrative. Because he's like, you know what? Like, it's not... That's what he doesn't like. Like, you know, I agree with you, right? Like, you could tell after watching it, yeah, of course this man is, like very frustrated by it. I would be too. Yeah. Especially if I got this man, Vlad, in front of me, like, trying to get a rise out of yeah. me. Yeah. And I think that's also what was frustrating him mm -hmm. more, right? Um, I do, because here's the thing, like, I, I wasn't one of those people where it was just like, oh, man, like, I love the way this guy was responding. More so, it was... I was like, this, this sucks. <laughs> like, I was like, yeah, like, this is frustrating. Like, I would hate to be in his position yeah. having to answer these dumb questions right now, right? Because of course it bothers me. Of course. Like, you're just trying to, like, yeah. get your views up and get me angry. Right. Right? Um, it's just, I don't know. Like, his situation is wild. Mm. You know, like, it's not even, like, just an ex. It's, yeah. it's the mother of your children, and it's your boy that you've literally known since you were a teenager. I'm quite sure they're well into their 30s now, right? They're old, yeah. So it's like, what is going through your mind? <laughs> like, like, bro, what are you doing? Like, it's almost like, <laughs> I feel like man to man, you have to go a little fizz and be like, what are you doing? This is one of those situations <laughs> where I look at you and I'm like, you literally don't care about me. You can't. You can't, like, <laughs> like there's, no, there's no scenario in which you can look at me as you're born and be like, yo, I actually care about this guy's feelings. Like, you don't. There's no scenario. How, do you, how can you look me in the face and say you care about, care so, about me? So now, is it worse? Like, we've already established we're not okay with our, our friends dating our exes. Yeah. But is it deeper mm. if your ex is the mother of your kids? Of course. Why? Why is it deep? Because... The le it's, it's all about levels. It's what? levels and optics. That's the word of the day today, <laughs> optics. It's levels and okay. optics. Why is it deeper? Why is it deeper now that I have children? Yeah. You're still, still your ex. Okay, so one, straight up, it's a scenario. It's like, wait, wait how, how old are these kids? Are they already... His kids are they're grown enough. They're not Okay, babies. so it's like, I've been, I've been introducing... I've been introducing you to my kids as uncle so-and-so, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. like, that, like, they've seen you. They've seen you. They know you. That, I've been introducing yeah. you to, uh, as Uncle That's Fizz. Uh, whatever yeah, his real name is. Uncle Fizz for all these years, right? And now, all of a sudden, 
my kids are supposed nah. to come to me and be nah. like, Daddy, what's, what's, nah, nah, what's, what's Uncle Fizz doing in the bedroom with nah. Mom? Like, are you crazy? <laughs> like, no. Yeah, you're, just, you're messing up my kids now. You're actually messing up my it's kids. It's levels and optics to everything in life. I didn't, right? think, I didn't go that far to think about it. Because you know, like, if, if you're separate, obviously the kids are with the mom. And the kids with the mom, and you're dating her, you're gonna see the kids. But that's what he said, though. Yeah, he he's said, like, you're making this weird for my kids. Like, he, he, he literally said in an interview, like, now that I have kids, like, things don't just it's affect not for me. me. Like, things don't just affect me, they affect my children, too, you know? And it's like, I think that's a part of celebrity that people don't always think about yeah. because, you know, it's so easy to, you know, he's rich. He's tear down celebrities, he bash yeah. them, say all yeah. these things. And then it's just like, they're people. Yo, yes, they're people. But it's like, what if they have kids? Imagine being the child of someone. Who's famous like that. That's crazy famous. And it's like, that child I just has want to be a to kid. They're just like, I just want to be a kid. You're, you can't because your you dad's can. famous. You literally can. And like, it's part of it's unfortunate, mm -hmm. right? But at the same time, it's like, people just all of a sudden forget that. Once you're famous, yeah. like you're, you're still human. But people yeah. forget that all the time. Like your kids have to go to regular school. You know? Unless you're putting them in private school. Like Doesn't even matter if they're going to private even school. If in pri you everyone knows. You don't, think those, you don't think those private school <laughs> kids knows. are still not going to roast you? Yeah. Like, come on. Like, that stuff is still happening, bro. Like, it's, yeah. it's nuts. Yeah, that's messy. The Uncle so, Fizz thing is crazy. I didn't even think about that. Look, I'll tell you right now. He's a better man than me. Yeah, he's, he's a better, better man, man than, than me. most. He might be, look, he, he might be answering this way, like, publicly. Because he, once again, he realizes, look, I don't want to mess... I got children, yeah. you know? Like, I don't want to make this be into a big... that crazy dad that's on TV now. I don't make it into a bigger thing. But the thing is, like, I think you'd be totally valid for being crazy about it. Yeah, I agree. You know, like, I, I, how, how, who would I be? Like, who am I to argue that and be like, yo, he shouldn't be acting? I'd be like, are you nuts? Like, <laughs> yeah. that's my boy. Like, that, that was my boy. Yeah. And now he's with the mother of my children... Out here acting like it's not like it's <laughs> like it's nothing. Like there's nothing wrong with that. Like there's no, you have no shame. Are you crazy? Like yeah. what are we talking about here? This is nuts. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, crazy. there was another probably like our last topic I want to bring up. Um, there was this video. It went viral like like I probably like two three years ago, mm -hmm. and it was talking about uh, the hypocrisies of women when it comes to dating, like their preferences, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought about this video because one of my homegirls tweeted the other day where it's just like, uh, what if, what if uh, your preference doesn't prefer you, right? So it's just hmm. like, what are the things that like you- Like what they want. Yeah, what if, what if you have a strong preference or something, but they just don't prefer you? So, and the other reason I thought about this, because on the weekend we were shooting that wedding, mm -hmm. and I like, was talking about like super short women, and oh. then I just did a hand sign. For context, <laughs> I was like, yeah, this girl that we saw was like 4'10". Four, four she she was 4'10". Yeah. She said she was 4'10", right? Anyone yeah. that starts with a 4, I'm sorry, that's wild. Four. But anyway, you know, she's like, yeah, I'm like 4'10". Mm -hmm. And then we just thought about how like, that's kind of crazy. It's, Extra crazy for someone like Ryan, because you're tall. How tall are you? I'm 6'3". Six 6'3". Three. Six three. I'm like 5'9", five 5'10", five if I'm being generous, mm -hmm. right? And they're going up, like, <laughs> below my chest, right? So I've heard from a lot of women, a lot of women over my years that they all want tall men, mm -hmm. right? And as someone that's not very tall, I used to, I guess when I was younger, I used to be like, well... Lost that lottery, yeah, like yeah. I'm not getting that. Then, but then you're like, who are you? But then as I got older, <laughs> I'm like, obviously, like I'm more secure in yeah, myself. Yeah, like, I realized I could do what you know what I mean. And it's just like one thing I used to think about is, okay, you're <laughs> five foot two, yeah, and you want a man that's like six three. You're gonna look like a ch his child. Yeah. yeah, you're gonna look like a child next to him. Like the optics. The, the optics. <laughs> like <laughs> the optics. It's the word. Yeah, the word. The optics of all these things. They look silly, right? And then I, I also they used to look silly. And I used to think. I used to think too. Like sh real talk. Maybe you can answer this better, right? <laughs> yeah. I was just like, yo, at some points during sex, it's gotta be like. Sometimes it's gotta be like a little awkward. For the, for the tall man, right? Like, I, I'm not saying it's a tall dude. Yeah. You must need, like, I know for a fact, you're not like, I need a girl that's like this. Yeah, five yeah. Women. But be honest, like, if you've ever slept with a short short woman, right? There have been times where you're like. <laughs> <laughs> it is strange. It's, <laughs> it's strange. 
it's strange because there's certain there's certain positions and angles that just won't work. Just don't. And it doesn't accessible. work. And the best way to explain it to you is bubbling or dancing in the club. Mm. So you see how, like... <laughs> I checked that water the most inopportune time. I was going <laughs> to spit it out. Go on. Like, that's the best reference. Like, anyone who dances in the club, like, you know, you, if you're dancing girls on you, if you're usually some of the similar heights, yeah. it's normal. Yeah. You know, the, her back <laughs> is in your chest. Yeah, it's her, normal. Her bum is on, you know, your, your parts, and it's cool. Now, when the height is drastically different, <laughs> like, just picture this literally. Like, if someone is that small, like, let's say 4'10", and someone mm. is 6'5", for example, their actual bum is at the kneecaps. Is that your kneecaps? Like, or your, like, quads? No joke. Yeah. Like, it's at the kneecaps of that male. Mm. Now, bring this to the bedroom... You can't do certain things with that discrepancy. Yeah. Right? You just so can't. the only things you can really do is like her on top and, and she's small. Hmm. You on the bottom, it's like, okay, she's that's fine. But like other than random top and bottom missionaries, everything else is it they're very brittle. Yeah. Right? Like it's <laughs> like it's just it's a very strange dynamic when someone's that much, you know, mm. uh smaller than the other person. That's why I always I was wondering like it's a weird thing to even think about, but do you remember Shaq's wife? Yeah, she's tiny. Bro. Small. Shaq is seven foot two. His wife, I'm not sure if he's, is he still with her? The same one? Yeah, probably. If he's still with the same wife, she's five foot five on a good day. Now you envision that. That's, that's <laughs> insane. It's weird. So I don't know. Like, I feel like it's, it's interesting how, you know, girls do request certain necessities or requirements for people that, you know, you know, they they might not even be preferred by that person. Right? So it's like, but it it's almost like the same way I'll, you know, people might be like, oh I want someone with a car and a house and this and they don't have a car or a house. So okay. <laughs> like so, so so he, so here's the thing, right? When it comes to the whole height height thing, you're like, yeah, I used to I thought of like, what if your preference doesn't prefer you? Because I'm like, what if this tall man wants nothing to do with you because yeah. you're pinch like next to him. But then it's like, okay, here's the hypocrisy. Like, a lot of women will say things like, I, I either want a tall man or he has to be taller than me at least. Mm. Or they'll say things like, he has to be taller than me because when I wear heels, yeah. I don't want to like be taller than him. But yeah. it's like, listen, a lot of you hate wearing heels because yeah. it's uncomfortable. How often are you going to find yourself Oh, you're saying they use that line as like a hypothetical? It's a crutch. They, use it as a, <laughs> they use it as a crutch the same way that like men will say, like, I'm not ready for a relationship right now. Even though it's like, they just don't want to be dating you, yeah, right? Yeah. It's the same thing. So my thing is this, like, women will feel no ways about, like, blatantly stating that, that preference, mm -hmm. right? It was like, I'm not dating a man that is shorter than me. I will not do it. If he's pinched... They're very open about it. Very open about it. Yeah. But the moment a man is open about some preferences that he has, mind you, that are valid. Problem. Problem. Your height... Genetic lottery, mm. right? Like you're I've seen people whose parents are short. Yeah. But child comes out tall. Right. Like you yes, there are things that go into play where it's like, okay, your height, you have an idea of this person may be tall mm -hmm. based on looking at their parents, grandparents, all that type of stuff. But I can't control that. I feel right? like they get more control. I feel like women get more control in the physical attribute department. And what we, they want? And, yeah, and we get more control in the, I guess, services personality department. In terms you think of, so? In terms of vocalizing, I'm talking about. In terms of vocalizing Like, yeah, yeah. we can't say, like, I can't publicly say I'll never date a flat girl. I'll never date a girl with no bum. I'll never, like, I can't, I can't publicly say that without yeah. being scrutinized. But you'll go out right? of your way in your mind to, like, be like, I know I won't date you because of this. Right, but, like... Yeah. But you'll like, never say it openly. Men, like, men will get scrutinized to say if someone has no bum, someone has no breast... You know, if if her teeth aren't straight, like yeah. we get scrutinized if we say stuff like that. Mm. Girls, if they're like, if he if he has bad teeth, mm. if he's bald, if he's short, yeah, like yeah, yeah, you're and, right. I and we you're let saying. it slide, like, like they can like, say all slide. these. Yeah. No guys, like guys just feel it. with it's like, ah oh, man, like I lose. Like we say, it, girls are like, what? If, if who cares about a little bum? Who cares? Like it yeah. becomes like a 
why are you controlling what kind of body? Like, yeah. it becomes like a really like a because body like, shaming thing for if, us. Like, if we do it, it's body shaming. Yo, like, it's crazy. If, if they do it to <laughs> us, it's just like, oh, shoot, yo, we, we lose this. Like, we lose this. I've thought, about, <laughs> like, I've thought about this in a different world where if I was, if I was like not as nice as I am, yeah. right? Back when I was using these day naps, if a girl asked me and she was like, hey, like, how, how tall are you, mm. right? What? And my response was this. I was like, I'm five foot nine. How much do you weigh? <laughs> like, right? <laughs> like, you're asking me because you have a preference, right? Yeah, yeah. She, not only she asked me, because right away, it literally, we could have been talking. That'd write you off. Write me off. Even worse, even worse. Even if we weren't having conversation, like a long conversation, right away, she could have been like, how tall are you? And off, if it's off rip. Off rip. <laughs> like, and like, ladies, like, don't look at me like this isn't a thing that happens, off right? Off rip. Off rip, she could ask me this. And if my, my name's height, Samora, how tall are you? <laughs> what? And if my height is not up to what you're looking for, mm -hmm. like a <laughs> double entendre. Conversation like, look, changes direction. Like, conversation is going to go differently. How is that any different than me wondering, like, okay, how much, like, how much do if, you weigh? Because if, if, if your preference is a tall guy, if you tell me you're 300 pounds, that might change my direction it of conversation. Might. It might. Like, you don't know. Because look, it can, it can literally. If this is what we're doing, like yeah. why can't we both do, if this is what we're doing, yeah. let's both do this. And I, <laughs> and I know, and I know like the immediate thing to do is like, okay, like he's not looking for like a big woman or that type of thing. It's like, one, I could be into like a bigger woman. I might not want like a skinny woman, mm -hmm. right? But the moment you ask someone about, especially women, the moment you ask about their weight, it's, like a totally different ball game, but it's like the same thing as asking me about my, my height. height. Except I can't control my height. There's nothing I can do to control my height. If I ask you how much you weigh, it might tell me some certain things mm -hmm. about the rest of your lifestyle. Your behavior patterns. You didn't, I, didn't, I didn't say make me short today. And I don't feel like working out till I get taller. Just saying. And like, <laughs> like, look, you know what? Just to clarify, if I'm being if I'm being brutally honest, right? Like, I've I've never dated uh, a bigger woman mm. because the fact that they're big. You know what I mean? Like, I'm gonna break it down. That's not the reason. That's not the reason why. Like, we've talked about it before. Mm. Like, a lot of I'll, I'll be honest. Like, a lot of big women. Some of the prettiest women I've seen, like cutest faces face. yeah. I've ever seen, right? Some of the prettiest women are big. But the reason why for me, like I feel like I've, ne I've never been in that position growing up is because I live a certain lifestyle that I feel like wouldn't like coexist mm -hmm. with someone that doesn't like train as much as I do right. or any of those things. I don't, I eat all the time. I mm -hmm. love to be with people who eat. Like that's not the issue. It's just like, you have to think about things that you're you comparing yourself to, right? Your lifestyle. Yeah. My height has nothing to do with your lifestyle. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. When is it going to come into play? Are we playing pick up ball like every other day? Like You need a tall guy? You need a center. You need it. That's what you need in your life. Come on now. Come on. Stop this. No, it's... Anyway, I think that's the perfect place I don't know. I feel... Uh, yeah, it's... Like, what do you... What, what's your final thoughts on this? It's just tough. Like... Even just the date, like the dating industry, and the dating culture we live in now, like it's just it's very tough, because there's so many, there's so many variables that we can and can't control, mm. and I feel like the things that we really think we're looking for get overlooked because of the surface stuff. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it, it's so easy to just be like, you're not tall enough, so I'm not interested in you. Yeah. When really. That guy could be that guy that you've been complaining that you've been looking for for your whole 100%. life. Like, I want yeah. someone who treats me like this, who does this, who does this, but he's, t but he's short, so mm. I'm not even going to bother. Yeah. And then you complain about the certain traits that you're looking for. Mm. Okay, fine. But then it's like, we also are conditioned to... It's, it's so strange because, like, I always, I always like have these deep conversations with myself where it's like, do you actually have an opinion? Mm. Like, do do you have preferences? Yeah. Like, do you actually have, like, or are your preferences granted to you based on what, society? So, what someone else has told you is what you like? Or, like, like do we actually like, do I, do I actually I know, like anything? I know that <laughs> I, I know that I don't have a preference. No, I when I say, yeah. when I say preference, I don't mean preference in a woman, but yeah. I'm saying you, 
there are things that you look at, you're like, I find this attractive, mm. but why? Yeah. Like, yeah. why do you look at this girl and you find this girl attractive versus this girl? Mm. And I'm not saying race, height, what I'm talking about, like, you will look at a girl, you'll be like, wow, this girl's attractive mm. to me. Yeah. And you look at this girl, you'll be like, nah. Yeah. Why, though? Yeah. Like, why? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we like, don't even, like, there are things that I, have been conditioned in yeah. our brains, mm. all of us, that, tells us this is attractive to me mm. because this is what I've been told is an attractive thing that I'm supposed to like. But I think the reason why, like, it, to your point, right. it becomes, like, so jarring is because the moment you see someone where you're like, oh, my God, this person is attractive, but they don't fit the conventional standard of attractive. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So it's like, to your point, this person on the left you're like, wow, she's attractive. This person on the right, nah, she's not. But then there's like a person in the middle who's like, you're like, whoa, there's something about her that's attractive, but like society would tell me she's not yeah. for like, because she doesn't have those this the, or that. Those, so are it's the, like, those are the girls you run into, you're like, why do I like you? Yeah. It's so confusing because it's actually not fitting society's standard, hmm. but it's, I think that's really the true opinion yeah. of your feelings, which is, yeah. I feel like that, like when you're actually confused about why you like somebody, I, I, I think we might have just done something. When you're confused, <laughs> when you're confused about why you like someone, I think those are the things you should explore. Yeah. That's a good point. I think, you know what? I think next Because you don't yeah. have the answers. Yeah. And I think that's what will make a longevity for you because you're exploring to understand why you like this, mm. rather than like you looking at something, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Like, if because it's so quick, I don't think it's true. Yeah. You know no, I get, I get it. I get. I totally get like that. Like, if you can point at something and be like, yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that. I feel like I don't know if that's really accurate to you. Mm. But I think if you look at someone, and you're like, I like this person, but I actually can't figure out why. why? I think that is the person you need to explore. Yeah. Like all those friends that are in friend zones right now. Your time's coming. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's coming one day. You're in a friend zone because she's confused. Wow. I'm telling you. Possible. Anyway, we're hey. going to wrap it up there. Hey. I think next week is a perfect week for us to have a guest on the show I to explore should. some of these things as well. Because a lot so. of questions I'd love to ask him too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, wrap it up. What man. kind of guest? Hmm? What kind of guest? Let's, get a, let's see if we can get a person female? of the other gender. Start with that. Female, <laughs> I would love to do that. Put us in check, you know. Um, yeah, as always, guys. This was it's, it's just great to just wrap up with you guys. Um, you know, it's gonna be interesting to have a guest on the show. I'm not even sure how we're the. No, we'll make it. I work. guess you can right. sit on the table if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I will make it work. It'll be it'll be fun to have you know another dynamic and you know it's again we're, it's it's fun and it's engaging because we're two males talking about this. But we're limited in what we can experience, what we can say, because we're only males, right? Mm. Like, I can never, I can say what I think. I always say this is what I believe women may think or believe women may feel. And even if we bring a female guest, she's not speaking for the whole, yeah. you know, gender. But it's all, it will give us a different insight for some questions that we might have and some questions you guys might have. Um, so it's always been a great dynamic when we have, you know, um, lady guests on the show. Mm. Um, but thank you guys for tuning in every week and supporting what we do. Hope you guys um, are still in a relationship after this. <laughs> Hope you're causing you fights back home. Yep. Um, until next week, guys, and thank you for tuning in to WTT TV, and thank you for listening. That's it. We out. See ya. Peace. Hello? We need to talk. 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 <laughs>